Yeah, I mean, you know, I always feel like I don't do enough research. Like there's there's always that feeling that, you know, like, oh, if I just had four more years to look at this one topic. And it's like, no, Libby, you don't have four more years. You don't even have four more minutes. You know, uh, a portion of this takes place in New Orleans, which is a city I happen to love. But I needed to understand what New Orleans in, 19, in the 1920s was like. Um, of course, I needed to know about um, uh, you know, gay culture in New York in the 1920s, which, by the way, was kind of thriving. And you know, it's it's really not until the Depression that you really you start to get this real pushback. Um, which is not to say that you know it was it was like post Stonewall America, but it was um, it was still much freer than one might have imagined. Like uh, finding out that they had drag balls at Webster Hall, which was just I mean that was fantastic. I happen to have my grandmother's diary from 1927. And one of the things, years and years ago, I was going through some photographs that, that she had, and I came across this photograph of my grandmother and this other woman, and the woman was blonde and tall. My grandmother was, was very petite, and she's looking at the camera like, you got bail money? Because you're gonna need it. Um, and I said, I looked at my grandmother, my grandmother, who was, uh, who was, uh, had a very sharp Dorothy Parker kind of tongue, but who was very, as I would say, very Presbyterian. And she, she, I said, who is this lady? And my grandmother said, oh, that's Evangeline. <laughs> and what was it? I think she said something like she was hot to trot or something like that. And I thought, oh man. I'm, uh, you know, and she said, you can have that photograph. And I said, yes, please. And I always thought someday, this seems like a character I would really like to explore. Mm -hmm.